been known for decades that some metals like aluminum, calcium, copper, iron, and manganese accumulate in human tissues during aging and that toxic levels of these metals have been linked to diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and a host of other supposedly chronic age-related conditions. Hi, this is Alexander, Minnesota chiropractor, Dr. David Butler. In today's blog, I'm going to discuss an article published in the November 6, 2014 journal, Aging, which talks about the effects of iron accumulation in the body. Now, recently, researchers at the Buck Institute in California have linked iron accumulation to premature aging. Now, prior to this study, the common belief was that iron accumulation happened as a result of the aging process. However, the researchers at the Buck Institute used a little roundworm in their experiments called nematode C. elegans to show that iron accumulation itself may be a significant contributor to the aging process by driving environmental epigenetic changes at the cellular level which result in dysfunction and malfolding or not functioning proteins that are implicated in the aging process. Now here, similar to what happens in humans and other mammals, researchers in this study found that levels of calcium, copper, iron, and manganese increased as the worms aged. But the iron accumulated much more than the others, said the Buck Lab faculty member Gordon Lithgow, PhD, who was the senior scientist on the, on the project. Now, Dr. Lithgow states, we were drawn to iron because there is a, in all the literature that links excess iron to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. In the study, the researchers began manipulating the nematode's diet. Now, we fed iron to four-day-old worms, and within a couple of days, they looked like they were 15-day-old worms, said Lithgow. And excess iron accelerated the aging process. They knew excess iron was known to generate oxidative stress going into the study, and the Buck researchers expected to see changes in the worm based on that toxicity. However, according to Dr. Lithgow, Instead of what we saw looked much more like normal aging, he goes on to state the iron was causing dysfunction and aggregation in proteins that have already been associated with the aging process. Now we're wondering if excess iron also drives aging. As part of this research study, the researchers also treated normal nematodes with an FDA-approved metal chelator called CAEDTA, a drug that's used in humans at risk for lead poisoning to remove heavy metals from the blood. And in fact, they found that the drug did slow age-related accumulation of iron and extended the health span and lifespan of the nematodes. Additionally, the researchers also gave the drug to worms genetically bred to develop specific protein aggregations implicated in human diseases. And they found the chelator was also protective in those animals. And Dr. Lithgow says the work has implications for the aging research field and states that maintaining the proper balance of metals is key to good health throughout the lifespan and it's pretty obvious that this delicate balance can go off kilter with age. Now prior to the study, the delicate metal balance had not been extensively studied by aging researchers. So it's an area that has potential for positive exploration. But Dr. Lithgow also voiced his concern about the general public's use of chelators. And he is very quick to warn people away from taking CAEDTA and other available chelators for anti-aging medication. 
and he states CAEDTA has a very blunt mechanism of action and is associated with dangerous side effects in humans. And the track record for other chelators is not well established or very well understood. So he urged people to talk to their physicians about the use of iron supplementation, especially for postmenopausal women. And this is a practice that's been going on for a long time and is very well prescribed, but not very well understood. So this research may drive the direction of future research the Buck Lab and others might pursue in finding new, less harmful chelators. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this fascinating topic and about maintaining the delicate balance of minerals, metals, and supplements, I'd like to recommend an excellent, well-written, easy to understand, much more easy to understand than this article, book called The Calcium Lie, which was written by Dr. Robert Thompson, MD, and Kathleen Barnes. And this will give you a great basis to understand how these substances can affect your health at a cellular level. And will also give you the knowledge to ask your medical doctor about medications or prescriptions that he might be recommending. So, if you'd like to read the Buck Institute study, please follow the PubMed link at the bottom of this video. And as always, if you'd like more information about improving you and your family's health, please visit our website at backfieldsgreat.com. And if you get a chance, please like Century Chiropractic Center on your Facebook page. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you that have commented on these video blogs. Your encouragement helps. Until next time, this is Dr. David Butler wishing you good health.